chapter 25 started out with a new friend. That new friend was electric potential difference. <clears throat> The symbol for electric potential difference, you can. Say again? U-E-L-E is not the electric potential difference. It is delta V. What is U sub E-L-E? Look. Electric potential energy. So, electric potential energy is capital U subscript E-L-E, but electric potential difference is the delta V. What are the dimensions for electric potential difference, Sarah, J. Joe? Um, Newton's per coulomb. Newton's per coulomb. Actually, not Newton's per coulomb. That is the electric field, Sierra. Volts. Volts. Or V. A volt in terms of other dimensions is what? Matt? A volt is joules per something. Joules per something is correct, but we do need to know the something. Okay. Not joules per newton. <coughs> joules per coulomb. Joules per coulomb. Just for fun, what would a joule per newton be, Jenkins? Joule per Newton. Just a meter. <laughs> All right, joules per coulombs. All right, we have equations for electric potential difference. We have several. One is the general equation for electric potential difference, which is in terms of electric potential energy. Dorfstetter, what is the electric potential difference in terms of the electric potential energy? Um, energy over charge. That's where we get joules per coulomb from. We also have the electric potential difference of a continuous charge, continuous charge distribution. Brent Sunk. Negative of the not the one I was looking for, but that's fine. This is a general definition for the potential um, difference. We also have, what else? We have actually four different equations for the electric potential difference then. Uh, here. Negative ED. Negative ED. Where is this one true? When do we know the electric potential difference equals negative E D? Is that in a constant electric field? This is for a constant electric field. What does the negative in both of these equations mean, Sierra? Well, as you like follow the electric field. As you go in the direction of the electric field lines, the voltage decreases. The voltage decreases. The electric potential goes down as you follow the electric field line. We have another one. Who wants to give me another equation for electric potential difference, please? Uh, Nick? K integral dq over r. K integral dq over r. And this is the one where we'd be figuring out the electric potential difference between a point infinitely far away and a point r distance from a continuous charge distribution. Actually, let's add one more. And the electric potential difference equals KQ over R. What is that one for, John? Point charge. For a point charge. Look, we only have five equations for the electric potential difference. It's one thing. Uh, let's see. Just to make sure we get it down here as well, this equation is actually not on your equation sheet. What format does that one take on your equation sheet? That The electric field equals the negative of the derivative of potential of a function of position. Notice it's just the derivative rather than the integral. We have all those. So please notice with this one right here, 
you should have this memorized and you should be able to prove it. That being, that being said, because you can memorize this one, this one is often enough used that it's, while it is not on your equation sheet, you may simply use that equation if you are in a constant electric field and you are not asked to derive it. <laughs> Aquapotential surface. What is an equipotential surface? Tim. Where, well, uh, sure, where the electric potential difference then would be zero, actually, where the electric potential is the same, but the electric potential difference would be zero anywhere else. Matt? Well, uh, is that the only friend we're adding in it? No, we're adding one more. We'll get there. So this is where the electric potential difference along the surface is equal to zero. At each point on that surface is going to be at the same potential. Remember, on an equipotential surface, it takes no work to move a charge, assuming, of course, that you move at a constant velocity. If you're accelerating, then things are different. Uh, how Equipotential lines, equipotential surfaces are always blank to electric field lines. What is the fill in the blank? What fill in the blank? Spencer? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. Notice that equipotential lines, equipotential surfaces are always perpendicular to electric field lines. We've done that one. We've done that. Another friend to add to our table of friends is capacitance. I'll do a line here. Help out with the difference between the two. Capacitance. Simple for capacitance. Um, uh, C, dimensions for capacitance. Bill. Uh, True. <laughs> Sorry, that's that. Sergio A farad? Farad. The symbol for farad is F. What is a farad? Uh, All right. Let's start with the then the equation for capacitance. Perhaps that will help you, Vlad. What's the equation for basic equation for capacitance? The definition here. I'll use three lines. It'll help. What's three lines. K times uh, free space times A divided by B. That is not what I was looking for, but that's fine. That's a capacitance equation specifically for what, zero? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, answer the question I didn't ask then, or the one I did ask but wasn't answered earlier. Isn't that for just like a capacitor in like two parallel plate? This is specifically for a parallel plate capacitor. What is K in that <coughs> equation? True. It's not the spring constant, I'll tell you that. True. Jenkins. The dielectric constant. It's called the dielectric constant. Going back to the definition of capacitance, the three lines, meaning we've simply defined the capacitance as Dorf's there. What? <laughs> capacitance going all the way back, just the basic definition of, of capacitance. Oh, isn't that just the Q over The charge per electric potential difference. This is the definition of capacitance. It's how much charge per electric potential difference a set of plates can carry. Therefore, coming back to Travis, a farad is coulomb per volt. Coulomb per volt. Oh, let's see. We have those so far. All right, so when it comes to capacitance, capacitance, we've said, is charge per electric potential difference. Bless you. Please remember that capacitance is always positive. Uh, let's see. So when we're trying to figure out the capacitance of something, generally we need to figure out the electric potential difference. But before we figure out the electric potential difference, we need to figure out the electric field. <coughs> 
So before we figure out the electric field, we have to use Gauss's law. So notice, capacitance, you have to find electric potential difference, which means you have to find electric field, which means you need to use Gauss's law. Notice all the fun things you can review in there. Uh, capacitors in parallel. The equation for capacitors in parallel. This will That's a third series. It's a, that's a third series, not a parallel. I'll just I'll replace yeah, this parallel with series, though. That's easier. So this is actually capacitors in series. Add like this. Things we need to know then about capacitors in series, about the electric potential difference and the charge for capacitors in series. Pick one or the other. Tell me, Tyler, something about the electric potential difference of capacitors in series or the charge for capacitors in series. Wait, what? <laughs> Capacitors in series, we have that basically. Okay. 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 Now, we need to know things about either the electric potential difference of capacitors in series or the charge. We actually need to know both. I'm just asking for one. For oh, in series. In series. Okay. Um, the potential difference in series, it's like, it's the sum of it, right? Right. The electric potential difference total, if you're in series, you need to add the electric potential difference. What about charge when you are in series? Nish. Pyramid's constant. Well, I, I like the charge that goes through each capacitor is the same. So the charge delivered by the battery is the charge on each capacitor, right? The, the charges are the same. So we then have capacitors in parallel, the syllable of the equation for capacitors in parallel. C1 plus C2 plus Things about electric potential difference and charge for capacitors in parallel. Um, okay. Uh, I have no idea. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> we, we, we gotta know. Okay. Well, the syllabus. Are right, they equal to the, they're equal? What's they? Uh, the voltage on one. The, the electric potential difference across one is equal to the electric difference across the other, so on and so forth, when they are in parallel. What about the charge? Let. The charges act when you are in parallel. We have the charge on a capacitor. There are actually three different equations. One half Q times the electric potential difference. We also have one half the capacitance times the electric potential difference squared. And we have charge squared over two times the capacitance. Dielectrics. Capacitance equals K, the dielectric constant, times C naught. In other words, the addition of a dielectric increases the capacitance of a capacitor. Um, how? How does the addition of a dielectric increase the capacitance of capacitors? Um, it decreases the uh, electric field. Okay, number one, it decreases the electric field. Because it decreases the electric field, John. Um, it reduces the electric potential difference. It also decreases the electric potential difference. Because it decreases the electric potential difference, John. It increases capacitance. It increases capacitance. You can see capacitance is the, the electric potential difference is on the bottom. Therefore, the capacitance is going to be increased. We should probably add the two equations for capacitors in parallel and in series here. So capacitors in parallel. Uh, simply add C1 plus C2, dot, 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 and capacitors in series, 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus, et cetera.